uh, you know, when you say that, oh, uh, this person is really full of himself, or she is full of, him, uh, of herself. Uh, when you say that, uh, you mean like uh, this kind of people are doing things um, like anyhow, anyhow they want, or they are full of pride or something. That's when you say they are full of themselves. Such people, they are driven by themselves. They're just driven by their own selves because they're full of themselves. In other words, what has filled you, what is in you is very important. If you're filled with fear, you'll be driven by fear, just like that. If you're filled with courage and happiness, then you'll also be driven by it. There are people like that. They're always smiling and laughing. Yeah. You know, because maybe somehow they're filled, in their hearts they're full of, uh, you know, happiness. So even this morning I can tell, just by looking at our faces, uh, who is filled with happiness, uh, who is filled with fear, uh, who is a little bit confused, who is a little bit uh, mixed up right now. It's really easy to tell that. Uh, that's why it's very important sometimes to, you know, as Koreans say, uh, you know, they say, Pyojon Kwali. Like, you know, take care of your face, right? Even if something bad has happened, you should, you know, just smile and walk like that. You know, you make the entire atmosphere around you uh, change, right? And it's not just Pyojon Kwali, it's not just that. That has to really be inside of you. You know, something bad has happened, cannot really make you smile. How can you just force a smile on your face? Can't you tell a, a, a fake smile? Is it easy to tell a fake smile? When your professor walks in class, you've all failed your exams and he's smiling at you. You know that is a, is a fake smile, right? When Sir Jang Nim is not happy about your work and is walking in in the morning smiling and say, I, don't, I didn't like your work yesterday, that's a fake smile, right? So even, even us can tell that. Even dogs can tell it. Then now, not just quality, not just taking care of your face, what's really in you is very, very important. And the passage today really explains uh, about that very well. And we shall have a look at that. So as Christians, as children of God, what must we be driven with? What must be the thing that drives you? In this world, there is fear. In this world, there's anxiety. In this world, there's so many things that will always make us unhappy. We cannot be driven by those things. For us as children of God, we have God's word. We have to be driven by the word of God. If you're driven by the word of God, then it doesn't matter. Like the Christians in the first century church, as Paul explains here, these were people who were persecuted. Some of them were burnt alive. But they were still smiling and happy and praised God. And forgave even people who did those things to them. Why? Because for them, they were driven by God's word that was in them. Uh, as a child of God, if you're filled with the word, if you're driven by the word even a little bit in your life, you'll have success in your life. Even if it's just a little bit. Even if it's just for one day. Even if it's just for one week. If you're driven by the word, if you're led by the word, you'll have no choice but to see a great success in your life. So that means that in order to be driven by the word, we must have a correct understanding of the word of God. You can't be driven by the word if you don't have a very accurate understanding of the word. That is why today Paul is really, really, really emphasizing and telling Timothy so strongly about the word of God. So we need to read the word of God. We need to study the word of God. We need to meditate on the word of God. We need to apply the word of God. And also we need to share God's word to other people. When you do those things, uh, slowly by slowly, you'll start to see your life uh, being led and being driven by the Word of God. Do you have a time to read the Bible? Do you have a personal time to study the Bible? It's not just reading the Bible, but you have to also study the Bible. Do you have that time when you meditate on the Bible, on the Word of God? 
Do you have that time when you apply that word in your life? Do you have a time when you share the word of God? If you have answered at least yes three times to those question, questions, then you are you're being driven right now by the word of God. But if you answered no, I don't think so, maybe I should think about it, <laughs> uh, then it's really hard to be led by the word. So that time to read, to study, to meditate, to apply the word of God is very important in our lives. Uh, this is when we will be opened uh, to a life that is driven by the word and will be used by God to accomplish his desire. As his word is fulfilled through us, we will truly become the ones that God will use as a pillar for salvation of souls and for the construction of the sanctuary. So the first thing uh, is about the sacred writings. In order to grab hold of the truth of the Bible, we need first to identify and eliminate false teachings from among us. Isn't that true? If you want to correctly hold on to the word of God, you must be able to identify the wrong teachings. You must be able to identify and even eliminate from among you the wrong teachings. That's why Paul uh, is calling the people who are teaching the wrong teachings, is calling them evil people and imposters. Evil people. Because they are teaching the wrong teaching. The reason is because these kind of people, they uh, make people deviate from the truth of the gospel. Those false teachers makes people to not realize the truth of scripture. And there are very many people like that. That's why you have to know those people, you have to identify them, you have to eliminate them for you to be able to correctly hold on to um, the accurate word of God. What did Jesus do the first thing with the disciples? Among the very many first things, he asked them, who do people say that I am? Oh. And then the answer is, oh, some people say that you are John the Baptist. Oh, Lord, others say that you are Elijah. Oh, some people say that you are Jeremiah. Oh, there are even others who say that you are just a prophet. Those, all those are just wrong views and wrong teachings about who Jesus is in our lives. What do you say that I am? Simon Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for this is not revealed to you by blood or by flesh, but by my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. And behold, you are not Simon anymore. You are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. I've given you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you shall bind on earth is also bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is also loose in heaven. Even the gates of hate shall not overcome you. Given like absolute, ultimate, concrete blessings. May these blessings be upon you today. Amen. In his example, Paul mentioned two people. He mentioned James and Jambres in verse 8. If you look in, uh, in, in verse 8. Uh, because I'm, I'm just explaining the scriptures. It's really uh, good if you just open 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3. Because I'll be uh, referring to that many times. So, Paul is telling Timothy, don't be like James and Jambres. Who is, who is James and Jambres? Uh, these were the two Egyptian magicians that we see in the book of Exodus chapter 7. They were like very archetypical enemies uh, and opponents of Moses, but also they demonstrated great power and authority. You know, you know, Moses does this, they also do something on the other hand. It's like, what you call in Korean, mak sang maka, you know, like, they are together to the end, you know, bumper to bumper, you know, in some uh, English slang can say that. So, even though they were false teachers, but they showed a great power. Even today, you should be very wise in knowing the age we're living in today. There are very many false teachers of scripture, in the entire world, all over, in Korea, anywhere in the world. But some of them also they demonstrate a very strong spiritual authority. When they're teaching the word, you can sense they have a strong authority. I was watching a small video by the Shincheonji group, and the leader of Shincheonji was just 
saying something very uh, lightly. And everybody was like, Amen! Like that. He's saying, oh, today um, God is going to bless you. Amen! You know, everyone is just like shouting Amen. So you can tell they have a strong authority that they're demonstrating through that. Hence, they are false teachers. So Paul is calling these people evil and is also calling them imposters. False teachers oppose God as they also oppose the gospel. So both in word, in action, they oppose God and they oppose the gospel completely. And because they oppose God, they also are corrupt in their mind. And that is why divine aid is absolutely necessary to come to the knowledge of the truth. False teachers, in spite of their claims that we are this, we are that, they still oppose God. They still oppose the gospel in every way. And in our passage today, we see in earlier verses, in, from verse 9, it says, they will progress from bad to worse. That's why we need to quickly, just like you know, last week's message, you need that spiritual wisdom to really know what is the gospel. Today, as you're worshiping like this, your success in worship will come when you realize what the gospel is. Your success in worship will truly come when you open your spiritual, uh, spiritual life and really grab hold of the gospel. A lot of people go to church every Sunday and they go back home, but they have not opened their heart to the spiritual truth, right? You can go to church every Sunday even if you're not open to the spiritual truth. It's easy to come in here and go out. But the age we are living today is a very evil age. That's why, more than anything, you must open your heart, you must open your spiritual awareness and really grab hold of what the gospel is. That way is the only way for you to have victory in your life. So Paul says, it's going to progress from bad to worse. And in another verse he says, they will not get very far, for their folly will be plain to all, as was with those two men, like uh, James and Chambers as well. That is why he mentioned that those doing deceiving are themselves deceived. If you look in verse 13, uh, that's what he said there. If you look with me on verse 13, you will see that while evil people and imposters will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. So when they're trying to deceive people, they are actually deceiving themselves. And that's why Paul gives Timothy three instructions. Uh, number one, he says, continue. I have given you the gospel. You have received the gospel. Continue in the gospel. And then he says, in what you have learned, and also firmly believe. Continue in what you have learned and firmly believe. Three things. Knowing from whom you have learned it. The Greek word for whom in this passage is plural. And that means that it could refer to Paul himself or, or, or even refer to Timothy's mother and grandmother as we have seen in the book of 1 Timothy. So it is important to learn the word of God in the church from pastors but also it's very important to learn the word of God at home. This coming Tuesday, we will open the young parents, uh, young parents class for the gospel, like young parents gospel class. The, I think the official name is called the prenatal and infants parents, uh, like special lecture, special message for them. Um, for me, I think this is a great answer that has come to us. And also being able to open that class in this week, this is the first week of May. Uh, May is the family week, and God has given us that answer. There are very many young mothers, I don't know where they are today, but you know, these young parents, they have children. They need the gospel, but even their children need the gospel as much as they need the gospel. That is why the parents are very important. How can they raise uh, these children in the gospel? How can they teach them the biblical meaning of worship? How can they teach them the meaning of Christ and why we need to believe in Jesus? The, these mothers need to receive training. They need to receive the gospel. They need to enjoy the gospel. And since 
I'm not really a specialist in that area. I've called a specialist, a pastor who is a specialist in that, Pastor Son, and she will be the one giving these lectures and messages to them. So really pray for these young parents uh, that they can truly enjoy the grace of God and to truly make a resolution in their hearts to raise their family and their children in the gospel as biblical mothers and biblical parents. Amen? Amen. So you need to teach your children the word of God to know the scriptures because knowing scripture can make them wise for salvation as the passage today is telling us. It means that uh, knowing scripture, it can lead you to the knowledge of the truth. While false teachers and false teaching lead people to destruction, uh, accurately knowing the word of God, accurately knowing the scriptures can lead you to uh, faith in Christ. Uh, there's a story given by uh, one seminary professor in America, in Dallas, America. His name is James Boyce. I don't know if you've heard about him, but he's a very famous um, professor for biblical theology, like teaching scripture, and he's written so many books about the Bible. Uh, he has written so many commentaries about the Bible. Uh, he gave a very interesting and uh, kind of like a childish, ch a childish uh, story here. He said, uh, there was once a little boy uh, who loved his mother's strawberry jam. I'm, I'm sure most of us were like that. And so the, when uh, she left in the morning and, 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 and said to the, she was just leaving shortly and said, don't uh, go to my you know, strawberry jam. Don't touch it. Don't eat it. And she placed it on the top shelf and then she left. But almost a few hours, this kid was really holding it in. She, he really wants to go and, and eat the strawberry jam. But because of what the mother said, he's really trying to hold it in. After one hour, two hours, three hours, ah, finally he's like, I don't know, I'm just going to take it just a little bit. Not, not too much, just a little bit of it. And so he put a chair and then he went to the top of the shelf and got the jam and ate it. But do you think he's just going to eat just one, just a little bit and then come down? No, he's going to try another second round. Oh, and then put maybe four fingers and all of a sudden just eating the whole jam now. It was at, at that time when uh, he heard the mother coming back. Oh, this is a, you know, like a big problem right now. So all he could manage to do is just to come down from the chair. But that time, the mother opened the door and was like, John, have you been to my strawberry jam? This was the question of the mother. And then, of course, it's not going to say yes. Looking straight at the mother, he said, no, ma'am. And then the mother asked you know, a second time, John, have you been to my strawberry jam? But at that time, because the second question, he a little bit lowered the eyes. Maybe looking around the, you know, the waist area and said, no, ma'am. So he asked another time. She asked another time, John, have you been to my strawberry jam? Ah, so it's third time now, he was now starting to get nervous. So his eyes dropped even lower to, to the feet. And he said, no, ma'am. Then she asked one more, uh, you know, once more, John, have you been to my strawberry jam? At the time, his eyes fell even more lower and that he could now start uh, seeing his T-shirt that is filled with strawberry uh, um, you know, yeah, what do you call those? Stains, stains right, stains. Ah, that time, you know, he's seeing the stains, he's been asked four times, how can he say no? Um, but when I listen to that story, uh, of course, what is the teaching about that? I'm not really telling you not to go to your strawberry, uh, not, not to eat your, your mom's strawberry jam. The teaching is very simple here. Uh, when you first hear the word of God, you know, what, do you, what are you like? Oh, it's not even for me. That is for that crazy neighbor that I have. The second time you hear God's word, you're like, ah, oh, this is for, that, for those crazy people in the church. The third time you listen to the word of God, you're like, ah, oh, right, I wish my wife and my kids were here, you know, listening to this message. But if you keep listening to the gospel, finally, it is my message. It's your gospel. Amen? Amen. That is why it's very important to repeatedly keep reading the word of god keep studying the word of god keep uh, meditating on the word of god keep listening to the word of god you have to do this over and over again and the more you listen to the word of god the more you realize that ah this word is not just for those crazy people out there 
This word is for me. You realize that? Um, people don't really listen to the word of God repeated, repeatedly like that. You know, on Sunday, uh, we listen to the word of God 50%, right? Not so many people listen to it 100%, at least 50%. Why? Because your thoughts is in, uh, is in Thailand and your body is sitting in church, right? <laughs> A lot of people, you know, many times we are like that. Um, the English ministry also is the same. God has given us the word from the pulpit about the English field, English ministry. Uh, but why is it not taking place in your life? Why is it not being fulfilled in your life? It's because you just listen to it as, oh, that is so-and-so's message. Uh, that is, oh, my friend's message. Oh, that is not really for me. So all our deacons, our elders, our ringleaders, when you listen to the English ministry pulpit, how must you listen to it? You know, th thank God for um, uh, technology today. It's really easy to tell uh, if ringleaders or the elders uh, or deacons are really listening to the message over and over again. It's really easy. I can just go to, you know, our deacon Lee is really doing a great ministry. Thank you for that. Before, I couldn't tell, but this is as I can tell. When I go back to YouTube and look at the numbers of views, right? I can see it's four views. I realize, ah, they're not really listening to the word, right? <laughs> yeah. If they're really li listening to the word daily, let's say all of you are listening to the messages every day, at least in one week there should be at around 60 to 80 views, right? But just once, uh, like when it's posted, ah, okay, it's posted. You know, these days YouTube can just do like this and you cancel it. And you go back to your, you know, other funny videos and you're watching them. So I will keep checking the number of views you're watching. <laughs> it's really easy to tell. But it's not just about that. God has given us very specific covenants for the English ministry. God is not going to use a stone. God is not going to use air. God is going to use God's people to do God's work. And who is that God's person? The one who is holding to the word. The one who is being driven by the word. The one who has laid down his own thoughts their own ideas and they're just following what the word is saying. God uses uh, such person. Uh, secondly, the word of God is God breathed. God breathed. So what did Paul say when he said all scripture? Uh, the word translated scripture here is used 51 times uh, in the New Testament and always refer to the same part of the Bible. Sometimes it refers to the entire Old Testament, sometimes referred only to some particular Old Testament passages, and sometimes also referred to a particular New Testament passage, and sometimes to a larger portion of the New Testament, as when Peter refers to Paul's letters as scripture in the book of 2 uh, Peter 3.16. In our passage today, Paul was referring to the entire Old Testament and the entire New Testament put together until the time he wrote the book of Second Timothy. The only books that were written after Second Timothy were only the book of Second Peter, Hebrews, Jude, and John's writings, like the book of Revelation. So in other words, all the 66 books of the Bible are scripture and were written only by 40 uh, men who were inspired by God. Uh, in some false teachers, they only refer to the book of Revelation as the scripture. We don't need all the other uh, 65, only the book of Revelation. This is the scripture. We should follow this. Uh, it's not like that. That's why Paul affirmed that uh, so elegantly today and gave a final conclusion. He said, all scripture is breathed out by, by God. And when I was reading this, I realized that Paul used a word in Greek that has never occurred before in any Greek writings uh, whether biblical or otherwise, he used that word for the first time. Uh, the word is theop theopnitos, uh, which is God breathe. God breathe. So when you speak, it is you breathing your words. You're breathing your words out. So your breath, conditioned by your mind, pours out speech one by one. Even right now, I am breathing. 
and whatever I'm breathing is conditioned by my mind and my sound and everything and words are coming out one by one like that. So that is what Paul meant, literally, that all scripture is breathed out by God, one by one. So this uh, expression really perfectly matched what the Jews were thinking in that time. And of course, even the early church as well. The early church believed in exactly the same thing. As Peter declared in 2 Peter verse 1, he says, Knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Spirit. Men, uh, men spake, uh, sorry, I don't know why I'm speaking uh, Shakespeare's English right now. Men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Spirit. They spoke about God. Even right now, as I'm speaking to you the Word of God, sometimes I say things I never even put in the script. I'm like, why did I say that? Why did I move from the script? Sometimes uh, Elijah and Jinso, sometimes they get really angry because I give them the script, but when I stand here, I give another message sometimes. Sometimes it's like that. So when you see them frowning, uh, know that uh, maybe today Pastor Maurice gave a different message. <laughs> even today in the beginning, I gave something that's not in the script as well. But anyway, uh, even when you go to the field, sometimes you want, how can I do that upon? Just go to the field. Amen? Amen. How, how am I going to explain the gospel to them? Just go. Just go and tell them to wait for you and just go and sit there and just open the Bible. And God will also speak through you at that time. So it happened uh, when the scriptures were being written. So the divine origin of scripture is the reason for its power. Why does the word of God have, have power? Is because the origin of the scriptures is God himself. So scripture is useful for teaching, is useful for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Teaching and reproof uh, have to do with the doctrine. So you have to also to learn the right doctrines of scripture. The entire Bible should be studied for one to have accurate and sound biblical doctrine. And then correction and training uh, ha has to do with conduct. Uh, correction comes from the Greek word for straight. And if you read in the book of, uh, in the Bible, in the New Living Translations, it says it straightens out, uh, it, it, it straight, straightens us out. So reading the scripture, studying the scripture, meditating on the scripture, applying scripture straightens you up. It makes you straight. Because right now your life is really... Ah, wow, English. I need to study English again. Anyway, but when you read scripture, when you study scripture, when you apply scripture, when you meditate scripture, you can be straightened by the scripture. Isn't that true? Amen. Spend all your day on Facebook, you can't even sleep in the evening. Why? Because your eyes are just like remembering all the posts and everything. And your life will keep on becoming uh, coiled more. <laughs> this is all that I was looking for. You're coiling more and more. But we need that spiritual straightening. So when women go to the salon and they have their hair straightened down, it's called Palm, it's called palm, right? Uh, and there's permanent palm apparently these days. I think we need spiritual palm taking place in us as well. That's through training, through reading the Bible, studying the Bible, through applying the pulpit message, you're having your life being straightened by the word. And all your negative thoughts, all your unbelief is breaking down slowly by slowly. And more and more, you're being straightened by the word. It's very important in your life. Uh, your life will be straightened to be ready for training and which in turn will lead you to the way of righteousness. This is why the whole Bible is useful and profitable for all areas of our life. Okay, now let's look at the conclusion. Uh, let us be a role model in living our lives with spiritual know-how, filled with the word and driven by the word. And relay the word of God and make uh, the word of God that makes us whole. We have to relay this word of God. A life that is driven by the word is a life that learns and has assurance and continues 
in the, in the word of God. That's a life that is being driven by the word. This is a life of victory and a life that knows the will of God and does it. We should never be hearers of the word, but also we need to be doers of the word. Amen? Amen. Tell the person next to you, let us be doers of the word. Um, but which word? Revelation 3.12, God said, I will make you a pillar in the temple of my God. I will make you a pillar. May God make you a pillar. Amen? Amen. When you apply that word in your life, you will be a pillar for the sake of uh, salvation of souls. Also, this year, Pastor Juan gave us the message in Mark, uh, Matthew 25, uh, 13 to 20, uh, with the title, Double Portion. Uh, praying for 300 disciples, praying for 100 regional churches, and even 30 ringleaders. Uh, God will use somebody who is applying that word in their life. And also in the English ministry, Acts 2.5, where the scattered are gathered. I realize more and more there are so many people of God that are scattered all over. And God is going to use you to find them, to relay the word of God to them to be used as the role models for the sake of proclaiming the, uh, the gospel. So may you hold on to the word of God and experience the meaning of listening and putting the word of God into practice. And I bless you in the name of Jesus uh, to be competent and also equipped by the word of God for you to be driven uh, by the word in your life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We glorify your name, O oh Lord. We pray that through the disciples, the Lord, are competent and e equipped by the word. May you, Lord, lead us so that, Lord, we can be driven by your word in order so that, Lord, in this age that is evil and the age that is becoming more uh, worse in many ways, Lord, we shall find something that is driving us uh, into your will and your plan. We give you glory and presence. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen.